Welcome to another episode of Among the Stars Celebrity Perfume Review. So today I'm extremely happy to be bringing you guys my review of Rosé Rush, the new fragrance by Paris Hilton. So this fragrance launched this year, 2017, and is Paris Hilton's 23rd fragrance, technically 24th, maybe. We went over this in Can Can. There's a lot of maybes to the Paris Hilton fragrance line, which is totally fine. But I'm here to review Rosé Rush. So this is the box for Rosé Rush, and it says, looks. it looks very, 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 very similar to the Gold Rush box. You've got that kind of, like, um, crushed metallic glitter on the box that goes around all four sides. Um, in the middle it says Rosé Rush, Paris Hilton. And it's not really showing up very well on here, but it's there. There's a kind of a good way. The Maybe we'll take that off. Maybe it'll show up better. Um, maybe not. Anyway, this is kind of like a rosy gold color, um, and it says Rosé Rush Paris Hilton. And then you have a slipcase, um, which is Paris in a pink dress. Now, I know some people will compare this to Gold Rush, so I figured I should probably grab that now. Probably should have grabbed that before I started filming. And this is your boxes side by side, and they did do a little bit difference to them. Um, um, the dresses are definitely different. Um, I saw someone say that they just photoshopped the dress. Um, they did just photoshop the dress, but it's a different picture from a different part of the advertisement. So there's that. Top of the box, just like last time, says Rosé Rush. Um, and then in that kind of same font and whatnot. So the bottle looks like this this time. And I don't know why it does this, but this top is really weird. Like, if you compare it to the Gold Rush, like Gold Rush Metal... This seamless. This one does something really weird under light. And when I took this promo picture, I had to like edit the top so that the top didn't look so weird. Because like when I look at it, it doesn't really look too different. I mean, under the lights it does. But for some reason on camera, this almost turns bronze and it is rosy gold. I don't even know if I'm going to be able to get it to... Nope. Um, but the bottle looks like this. Very similar to the Gold Rush bottle. Except for there's kind of this fine crushed glitter on the bottle that fades down um, and starts to break off here and expose in the bottom of the dress. Now, before I get too much farther into this review, I do want to bring up a little tidbit. I'm not going to go too far off on a tangent about this. Um, I've been kind of poking at it on my Instagram and Twitter. But I'm going to pull up a picture of it. This bottle looks strikingly similar to something I edited back in February. So back in February, Paris announced the fragrance would be called Rosé Rush via a Snapchat live stream. Um, I think it was either Snapchat or Instagram or something, but it was a live stream um, that she said the new fragrance is going to be called Rosé Rush. Before that, there was zero information out about this fragrance. You could find nothing on the internet about it. No nothing. There was zero information. And because of that, and me having the graphic design background I did, I took the promo picture that they used for this to kind of promote the fragrance of the box and the bottle, and I edited out an image which, as you guys can see, is on the screen, um, with glitter and kind of a rosy gold. Now, I'm not going to say the rose gold is my idea, because it's rosé. Obviously, the, the next step would be to make it rose gold following rose or gold rush, but I do find it oddly weird that... I put glitter on the bottle that faded down, and there's glitter on the bottle that fades down on the actual bottle. So, that's just my little tangent. Take it as you will. You guys decide what you want. I just think it's odd. But anyway, so this fragrance is described as being romantic and floral. And before I get into notes, I'll say... When I first smelled this fragrance and first, you know, they released the notes and everything, I will say I was put off because I'm not a Rose fan. You guys know that um, Rose is one of the notes that I'm really not a huge fan of at all. And so I was going to give this one a chance. And at first spray, I hated this fragrance. There's an initial burst of Rose that I'm not a fan of. Um, but as it starts to dry down, as it's on my skin, I really like kind of the citrusy notes that come out of it. I really do enjoy this fragrance. In my opinion, it's kind of a modern take on a grandma floral. You have, you know, grandma florals generally have really nice bases to them, really nice um, compositions, but 
you have these really hard hitting uh, floral notes that people of an older generation do enjoy. Um, but people like in my age, my generation, we don't like those heavy hitty florals. And a lot of times the only way you can find them is in heavy hitty fragrances. This one does a really good job of balancing the heavy hitty florals of, you know, the peony and the rose with citrusy and fruity notes. So it makes it a little bit more modern, a little easier to wear. So the top notes of this fragrance, if I can unlock my iPhone and do this, is top notes are rose petals, neroli, and lychee. Middle notes are rosa may, peony, and juicy papaya. With base notes of sparkly amber, cedarwood, and musk. So when you first spray this fragrance, first thing you smell when you first spray it is definitely those rose petals. And to me, it smells almost like if you were to walk into a cooler at like a floral shop with the roses, that is exactly what I'm smelling is that kind of like cold burst of rose. But as it starts to dry down, the neroli comes out and adds a little bit more floral to it. Uh, but the lychee kind of comes in and backs it up. Excuse me. I can't breathe. Anyway. Um, but as it starts to get into that heart, you definitely can smell the papaya coming out. And it redoes this whole fragrance, what I really, really like about it. Because rose is a heavy, hitty fragrance. And especially rose in May is known for being a little bit harder and heavier. So I really like that they paired the middle with something that wouldn't normally go in the middle. And the papaya is generally a top note. And I really like that they made it a middle note and kind of blended it really well. And you can definitely tell in this fragrance that it is a middle note. Um, but... As it starts to dry down, you get a little bit more of that fruitiness. The papaya kind of adds a fruity slash citrus note to it. But you also kind of get from the lychee, and it balances really well with the rose and the peony that's in the heart to kind of create this springtime, floral, easy, soft, elegant fragrance. And I'm, I do really, really like this one. It's not my favorite Paris, just because it does have rose in it. So, I mean, regardless, the rose is there, and you can smell it. It is called Rosé Rush, so you can definitely smell the rosé, uh, or the rose. But I really wish, with this fragrance, that they would have put some kind of champagne or wine note in it to kind of make an effervescent, um, just because I feel like that would have complemented rosé a little bit better. In comparison to other fragrances like Viva La Juicy Rosé, it does have some similarities to Viva La Juicy Rosé, but it's definitely different. Um, I feel like Viva La Juicy Rosé is a little bit more similar to, like, Clinique's Happy. And this one's a little bit younger, a little bit more of a kind of a brought-back version of it. Now, I'm not saying that Viva La Juicy Rosé is exactly like Clinique Happy, because they're not. They're completely different. Um, but it does remind me of that fragrance. And this one doesn't really remind me straight off the bat of Viva La Juicy Rosé. I could see it. Um, when comparing them side by side, you can definitely tell the similarities. But this is definitely its own fragrance and its own standout. Um, as it starts to dry down, though, the amber comes out and creates this warmth with the cedar wood. And it's almost sweet. And it's almost like the papaya becomes papaya nectar. I know it's not in there, but there's just this kind of slight sweetness to the base of this fragrance. That as the fragrance develops, it makes it really, really nice. And I actually really enjoy it. Um... It lasts about, we'll say, eight hours. Between eight and nine hours. It doesn't last the longest in Paris collection, but with it being an eau de parfum, it does last around that, I will say, seven to nine hour range. Um, definitely think this is a daytime spring scent. This is perfect for the office because it's so elegant and soft that I don't feel like you're going to offend anybody with this fragrance. And it's just a really nice, easy, floral, pretty fragrance. Um, and it's supposed to reflect the old Hollywood glamour, kind of like, um, Gold Rush did, but this is more of that moment you're falling in love, um, and being invoked with the feeling of falling in love. So, there you guys go. There is my review of Paris Hilton's Rosé Rush. As always, guys, thanks so, so much for watching. Follow me on Twitter, A, the S Perfume, and Instagram, among the search perfume. Links in the description below. And stay tuned, guys, because I have a really, really big announcement coming soon that I've been working on. And I'm so excited to, like, release this to you guys and show you guys everything that's going to come from it. But I can't talk about it yet. Um, everything's not quite finalized with it. And once everything does get... There's a fly in here. Uh, once everything does get finalized, I will reveal it to you guys. But let's just know we're in the talking stages. And this is going to be a really cool uh, kind of 
next step. So, as always, guys, thanks so much for watching. Bye.